ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930 present The Drive. Welcome into the Friday, January 6th edition. It's The Drive on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. I'm your host, Paul Swanee. Hey, Woody Woodrum with me here. We're here today. We have co-opted. Does he know? We have co-opted Steve Cotton's radio booth. Don't tell him? Don't tell him. Okay. He, he allows Woodrum's in here, though, I'm, so I'm good. I've got to pass them because I'm being a company by Woodrum. Woodrum. That's right. Okay. So you're good. Man, it's, it's nice in here. <laughs> Yes, it is. Yeah, I, I come in here now and then, but it's just it's a nice palatial palace. And Steve would like really to turn this over to the upstairs visitors radio and then move into one of the small sky boxes and have a booth like that. I think that'd be a great idea. But uh, I, I hear he's uh, I hear he knows the athletic director. Yes, maybe, yes, maybe he does. Drop that and, note. and possibly could do that. And speaking of. Fields, what are we? Do, what are we doing here today? We're we're here because of baseball, and from here we can see a baseball field coming together. Guys are just starting to leave after a hard work day, but yeah, I still see them over there. There's no, still there's, some of them. Yeah, no, they're still working. I still yeah. see the working. We're here today because a new baseball coach was announced today. It was yesterday. The, it was the announcement. All right. Today was the presentation of the new coach. So. Cool. 29th yes. coach at Marshall Baseball. Marshall hired yesterday, and we at the introductory press conference today, Gregory Beals. He comes from most recently Akron, before that Ohio State, and we're going to hear from him later. I think he's going to try to get up here to us. If not, uh, we had a chance to catch up with him, uh, do a little uh, media scrum, so yep. we'll hear that. We'll also hear from Christian Spears, Marshall's athletic director. I, I don't know who's going to be able to come up here because right now, as the new coach, the first priority is to meet right. everybody. Everybody. I mean, everybody's walking up and saying hi. You know, somebody I was glad I got to talk to today, besides I talked to Christian a little bit before he got up on the dais and, and ran over the myriad of fields the herd has played in and at, or at over the years. And uh, But I also got to see Joe Carbone. And, and Joe goes back to Jack Cook, 1970, 1971. He was a GA here. His number one job after Marshall football games was to pick up all the ticket stubs that had free fries and McDonald's on the back of them, and Jack would give their players like their five bucks and a free fry coupon so they could eat on the road. <laughs> and Joe said, every home game without fail, I was out there picking up those fry cards. So, you know, he's a longtime coach at, at Ohio University. They'd probably name the field after him if they didn't name it. For the guy who immediately preceded him. Right. There's been some good baseball in Ohio. But Joe came and was part of the committee with the president, with Christian Spears, with Andrew Brown. And, uh, you know, they did a great job of going through coaches. And I'm I'm telling you, Paul, they, they could have done much worse on a, a hire. I mean, here's a guy that's been at Ohio State for 12 years. And he's, he's been at the big time. Uh, you know, he he knows a lot of baseball people in this area because he recruits all over at, at Ohio State. He mentioned the Atkins guys from down in Wayne County and, and Tim and his brother, are, you know, great contact people for baseball. And, uh, you know, I the baseball team was there today, and I thought it was nice. Christian Spears thanked the baseball team, the guys that were in town, probably a dozen or so. Yeah. They were all in pinstripes except they were the cross. Pinstripes. Right, and the thing about the <laughs> baseball team being here is a lot of these guys could have left. Yes. And there have been so many misfires and false starts and promises about a baseball stadium being built. Well, right now we're here in the football press box looking over, seeing the ground being prepped and yeah. ready for the construction here. We're seeing the progress. And when you go out and try to hire a new coach, I'm sure the first thing was, okay, you know, where are we at on that? Yeah, you know, and Craig, uh, you know, Jeff Wagner was here 16 years, never, never will get to play on that field, which that's the only thing bothers me. But I know, it, you know, there was a time for change. And obviously the 29th coach comes along, that means other people have been, you know, have either left or been fired in my, my experience. Jack Cook resigned, Howard McCann was let go. Craig Antush was let go. Dave Piepenbrink right. resigned. How do you win with job. this program up until well, this point? It. How do you win with this program? Well, you can't. Jack Cook would win back in the old days 
and he would play at the field house or St. Clouds when the backwater wasn't in there. Yeah, but the, the but competition, it, even though the talent was here, the competitive gap maybe wasn't as great because now it comes down to facilities oh, yeah. and everything Absolutely. else. Marshall just fell so far behind. Well, Greg Beal said, I've been recruiting against a new stadium at Marshall for 12 and a half years. <laughs> and and you had to laugh at that because that's how long the talk has been serious. And we've had, uh, you know, groundbreaking over there in the indoor building yeah. and all that. I was there. Yeah, uh, you were there at the indoor. I we, we were yeah. there at the um, at the other site that they were going to choose, just right. a, a couple of blocks from here. And Coach Cook was there. Yeah. We were Greg excited. Rousey. Greg Rousey was there, and Greg's gone along with Coach Cook now. And uh, I did like they had two tablets up front. And one said, we are Marshall, the Herd Way, our fountain. But the second one said, promises kept, number one, Jack Cook Way, baseball, 23. So it's going to start this year with this team. And he has a month to try to pull this team together. I think he can do it. I thought the best thing that he did, though, really, was he could see what the assistants had done to keep the team together. Because, like you said, the transfer portal, you can leak out in baseball. You get a free transfer the first time. So you could just go. But they didn't. And I think the assistants probably stepped up, kept them there, said, we'll have a good coach. You just give them time. I mean, it was late in the going, though. I I, I got to admit, I was concerned New Year's were going, where's the coach? And, and, you know, nobody wanted to leak anything, which is good. But I was just like, gosh, it seems like this has gone on for a while. Yeah. But they got the right guy. I think that's what they did. And, you know, he's impressed with everybody he's talked to here so far about, you know, Brad Smith and the great job he's doing and the president, and Chris Spears, the great job he's doing with this athletic program and, and all the other people that are involved here at Marshall. And he's going to find out, you know, he made the point. I like being in the herd, but that means there's more than one. And there they are. And the Marshall Thundering Herd – Athletics for this town and this region is their team. So I think they're going to be excited about having this new guy. We're going to try to bring people up and talk to us here for the uh, rest of the show. But when we come back, we are going to hear potentially from um, – we got a couple of, of, uh, of media scrums we're going to play for you throughout the show. We've got Christian Spears. We also have the new coach – and uh, we'll hear from some other folks as well when we continue on this edition of The Drive on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. This is The Drive with Paul Swan on ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. The edition of The Drive on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. I am your host, Paul Swan. Thanks for being a part of today's program. I'm here at Marshall University where a few moments ago I was part of the introductory press conference for the new baseball coach at Marshall University, Gregory Beals. We're going to hear in just a moment from Athletic Director Christian Spears. We'll get his thoughts on the hire as he uh, spent some time with us in the media earlier in the it was a it was a fun day. It was a fun day to uh, to bring in a new coach. So uh, as soon as uh, we can, we're going to bring you him, and we also have comments from the new coach as well. And we'll get your text in as we go through the hour. The text line this hour is three zero four three nine six talk three zero four three nine six eight two five five. That is the number you can text in to be a part of today's program here on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. So let's hear uh, just a few minutes ago in the media scrum from Marshall Athletic Director Christian Spears. Was there any any worry from your candidates? I mean, you got the right guy, but when you say, hey, we're putting a new baseball park together, it's not here yet. You know, did that sort of weed out some of the candidates? You know, there's this uh, believe before it happens mentality, right? And I think... I think Coach Beals has it. A lot of times a candidate can't see it unless it's in front of them. And, you know, that's what, what attracted me so much to Coach Beals. He believed it. He sees the vision. He's done it before. He knows how to build it. And his competencies are so extraordinarily good. I'm really confident that we'll, he'll lead us in such a special way that we'll get to a Sunbelt Championship. We will. Obviously, he was at Akron before this right. briefly. Right. Um, you know, I... 
did you have any worry that maybe you know he wanted to get things settled there, or you know how did you approach him about that having with him having taken the position so, so recently? You know the greatest thing about having Coach Garbone as a part of this process is he's got personal relationships in the baseball space, and you know. I asked him to help me identify candidates that he thought could create, that would honor the legacy of Coach Cook. And and he kept coming back to Coach Beals. Hey, Christian, I know he's been there for less than a year, but I really think we should give him a look. And, you know, he was right, and we gave him a hard look, and then I brought him here, and then I saw his enthusiasm. Yeah, there's a bit of a chip on his shoulder, you know, and I think he's willing to compete in the arguably one of the best conferences in the country. Uh, so I was thrilled to be able to pull him away from Akron uh, and into uh, into the green and white. With him having left Akron just recently, uh, under your, did that change any of the negotiations with like financial tactics, having to pay out the buyout from Akron? Or no? uh, you know, a little bit. You know, the way you just you manage that through contracts and you, you look somebody in the eye and you tell them how we're going to have to do it because of the buyout, and, and then you manage it together, and then you move forward, right? So we're going to develop a long-term agreement with Coach, a five-year commitment, and we're going to take the time to build this program. And February of 24, we're going to be in a new ballpark. And, you know, I'm just so excited that we were able to pull him out of Akron and into Marshall because I think he's going to win here. With the five-year contract, so the expectations are five years, let's get it done. You're giving some time to grow. Yeah, this is this is not an easy fix, right? But I, I think we're going to be competitive immediately. I do. And I think Coach believes he's going to be competitive immediately as well. But I want to build a program and and sometimes you got to give longevity to do that and i love consistency and continuity Uh, so i'm thrilled that he was uh, amiable to a five-year deal and let's go Marshall university athletic director christian spears speaking on today's new hire marshall university hiring a brand new baseball coach and Gregory Beals. We're going to hear from him in just a few minutes. Uh, We've also got his uh, presser from earlier today. So we're going to get to that here in a moment uh, as we are getting everything squared away with our audio. So as soon as I get the thumbs up on that, we're going to go to that, but I'll tell you what we'll do first. We'll take a break and come back and we will have some of the press conference from earlier today when we continue on this edition on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930 and on WRVC.com. This is The Drive with Paul Swan on ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. Welcome back to the Friday edition of The Drive on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. Uh, It's uh, quiet here now where I'm at. I'm in the radio booth from Joan C. Edwards Stadium, where earlier the introductory press conference for Marshall's 29th baseball coach, Gregory Beals, happened. And we're going to hear from him in just a moment. First, we're going to hear his presser, and then had a chance to be a part of the media scrum with him, and we'll hear a little bit of that. So he comes in from Akron. As you heard from Marshall Athletic Director Christian Spears, able to bring him in from Akron, And he is hitting the ground running. Today is Friday. Everyone will be back on Monday. They're going to definitely be using the indoor facility uh, extensively. We're going to eventually get a schedule of games where they're going to be played. So you're going to hear more about that in the coming days. But let's go ahead and hear his comments from his introductory presser. This is Marshall's new baseball coach, 29th head coach in program history, Gregory Beals, as he was taking the stage. Man, I'm excited to be here. And so many, so many people to thank um, for this moment. And, you know, first want to you know, wanna thank the president and his leadership. Man, that's a special guy. And, and I had the opportunity to meet him uh, on my interview, and, and he asks real questions and makes you think. Um, so I know we are in uh, very, very good hands from the leadership from the top. So President Smith is phenomenal. I look forward to working for him. And A.D. Spears and just the energy and the vision that he has, not just for our athletic department, but specifically our baseball program, um, had me like in. So excited about excited about that opportunity to work 
um, with those two special people at the top. Um, also got to mention a Andrew Brown, who's going to be my uh, sports supervisor and my direct connect with the administration. He's just been phenomenal for, uh, for me in this process. His leadership and communication through this has uh, certainly made it as smooth as possible. Thank you back there. I look forward to uh, a lot of work together. Uh, and uh, Coach Joe Carbone, uh, Coach and I go back quite a ways. Um, and just, you know, grateful for him. And uh, he has seen me from a player to a coach to an assistant coach to a head coach and all that. And uh, like I said upstairs, I, I'm sure he lit some fires on both sides of, of this equation to, to get us here. So thank you for that confidence. Uh, that means a lot as a, as a colleague and a friend. So thank you. Um, Bear with me a little bit because I'm an emotional guy. I'm a very passionate. And we kind of talk about family. And Christian, thank you for uh, introducing my family. Uh, this doesn't happen without that. There's uh, checks and sign-offs that go along before a uh, coach makes a decision on, on moving uh, and taking on this opportunity. And uh, it's a great opportunity that I was working hard in the family for the whole way. And and I got full approval, and so thanks to uh, Kath and the girls. <laughs> so we'll be here. And family is, is very, very important. We're going to talk more about that as I go through this. So, you know, why Marshall? And there's so many things. This is a very exciting time at Marshall University. The leadership from the president, the leadership here in the athletic department, uh, we're moving into a new conference. We're building a new stadium. Um, there is just so much to be excited about and to, to look forward to. And for me, it was a no-brainer. I mean, it really was a no-brainer decision um, to be here. I talked about the first email I sent, and I used the word special, that there's a special opportunity here. And I have felt nothing shy of that from interview process to meeting people in the community to meeting the other coaches in, in the department, starting to meet you know the coaching staff in, in, in the baseball program and, and players. Um, special is still the word, and, and that there's a great community here, and uh, that, that's something that we look forward, my family and I look forward to, to joining. Um, who am I? You know, I've been introduced as a 29th baseball coach here at Marshall University. That's, that's what I am, and that's my, my, my task professionally. I, I want to talk a little bit about who I am. And, you know, I, I, I'm a believer. My faith is important to me. My family is dear, dear, dear to me. Very, very important. And those things uh, are, my, are my lead core values, and baseball is right there, right there behind that. Um, this game of baseball is very important to me. It's been my life. And there's two things that I'm going to be true to all the way to the end. That's the game of baseball, and that's to the student athletes that are in our program. Those two things will never falter as far as my thoughts are. I'm going to take care of the game, and I'm going to take care of my guys. Um, you're getting a program builder. You're getting a guy that believes in player development. You're getting a, a coach that believes in student athletes, the whole idea of student athletes, what we learn and how we grow as young men. You're getting somebody that believes in that, somebody that believes in intercollegiate athletics, all right, um, and how we utilize that, that opportunity in intercollegiate athletics, that opportunity as student athletes to put ourselves in a position to be elite. And gentlemen, you're going to hear that word a lot, the word elite, because we're pushing for that. An elite is a high-level word. Um, you guys have seen it on the text change. You've seen that word already. You're going to keep hearing it. I love my job. Burning passion for the game of baseball. Fundamental belief in education and student athletes. Put the two together and put a group of young men in a great spot. That's what my charge is going to be. We've got big dreams. We've got dreams of playing for championships. We've got dreams of playing professionally, those guys do. We've got big dreams, and we're going, to be, we're going to chase those dreams, and we're going to be in a great position on and off the field 
when the race is done. I promise you guys that. Our core values inside our baseball program are going to be elite preparation, competitive toughness, and brotherhood. All right? You break it down, prepare, compete, and be teammates. Pretty simple, pretty old school. The other words that we tie along with that are very, very important to me. I've used the word elite already. That's a choice we all get to make every day, whether we're going to be elite. I'm going to work hard to teach these young men how to be in, be in an elite mindset on a daily basis. That's going to drive our training. That's going to drive the dude inside of us, is that elite mindset. So the word elite is just as important as preparation. The word toughness is important, along with our competition. Our toughness is a, is a mental thing, not a physical thing. In the game of baseball, we've got to be able to respond. Every 20 seconds is a new pitch, a new competitive opportunity, a new situation, and we've got to be able to get there. Every 20 seconds, that takes a toughness. So when we talk about competitive toughness, that's what I'm talking about. And then we use the word brotherhood more so than team, all right, because a brotherhood brings out a family, the idea of family. And uh, we're gonna, we have a group of young men that chose to come here, chose to come to Huntington, West Virginia, chose to come to Marshall University. So we've got commonalities. We've all made this decision to be here, and we're going to attack it together uh, with a family mindset together. Is critical there. I, I think it's pretty cool, and I've never been, in, you know, in an athletic department that had a nickname and a mascot that was plural, or that was, you know, there's no such thing in the herd. Like one, one doesn't make a herd, right? So you can't watch one bison, right? If one bison go down the street and call it a herd, right? But you know, the Buckeyes. There's a Buckeye. There it goes. You know, where uh, the herd is a group. And I love that idea. We're going to be a group. We're going to do it together. And uh, nobody gets to their best spot in the world, in the game, in, in your education, in your social lives, in anything professional you do. You don't get there by yourself. And we are the herd, and we're going to be that together. That's going to put us all in a great spot. I love that concept of that, that word, the herd. So I might be using that more than team. That might go into the, the core value instead of brother. I don't know. But I, I, I love that, that word and that, and that idea of being a herd. On the field, we've got some work to do, but you're going to see a well-prepared, tough-minded team that thrives on competition. Anybody that knows and been around Coach Beals, I love to compete. We get a ping-pong game going on. We play a game of Euchre or something like that. It's on. If there's a scoreboard, it's on. We're playing to win. Uh, so I'm going to keep tapping into the dude inside of us to compete all the time, too. So that's what you're going to see on the baseball field. Uh, I, I want to thank the current staff. These guys are here today. We had a chance to meet for a couple hours this morning. Um, man, I really appreciate the work you guys have done to uh, keep the preparation going. And uh, this team, these guys right here deserve 23. They deserve the best we got. And there's big plans for the future. But my number one responsibility is to have you guys ready for February 17th and to be ready to compete right now. And we can do both. We can build the future and be locked and loaded, ready to go this year, too. And we're going to do that. And uh, thank you, guys. I look forward to uh, continuing to work together. Um, fun conversations ahead. Talking baseball in that office, there's fun conversations ahead. You know, I need to, I need to comment on some of the guys that have gone before me. And, and Coach, Coach Jeff Wagner was here, and I, and I appreciate his stewardship over this program for the last 16 years. Um, and, you know, Jack Cook is another one. And I, I, I didn't have a, a great um, relationship, didn't really know Coach Cook, but I have a very, very strong understanding of the legacy that is here, that he has left here in this program. And that's where we need to get to. That's the vision. We've got to talk about championships. We've got to talk about representing this great university in the national tournament. We've got work to do, but that's the direction that we're headed. Um, and I'm really excited uh, to do that. My family's all here. I'm here. We are Marshall. Thank you very much. That is the...
presser, the introductory presser of Marshall's 29th head baseball coach, Gregory Beals, and one of the members of the media that was there. And you're going to hear from the media scrum here in a few minutes. Luke Creasy from HD Media. It has a very busy schedule today and tomorrow. We got this today. Tomorrow we'll be at the Cam Henderson Center for Marshall Basketball. Double header. Double header. Uh, you and Tim Stevens, I'm assuming. Tim's going to be there. Uh, for- Rick Elmore is going to be there with okay. me. Okay. So. Okay. Yep. Yep. And then in between, I'm going out to uh, Wayne High School here in a little bit to, to catch the, the matchup of the top two teams in uh, Class AAA. So, in girls basketball. Looks like it's going to be a fun night in tomorrow for you. But uh, we got to start with today with hiring Beals. We were commenting earlier, we were looking at the uh, construction happening and, uh-huh. and the workers getting off. You know, I would have been the first thing I would have, if I was interested in this job, I would have made sure that there was construction happening to just to get a feel for, okay, is this program really moving forward? Because we've heard it so long. Yeah, and I think, uh, you know, Beals himself kind of referred to that. He said, I've been recruiting against this potential stadium for many years. Um, you know, he's got quite a few years as a head coach and, you know, his, uh, you know, Columbus not too far of a drive from, from here in Huntington. And so... Uh, a lot of the same recruiting base, and, you know, we've seen some local kids go up there uh, and play for the Buckeyes. So, um, you know, uh, th- that's a big development, and that's big for the future of the program. Um, you know, I think that's that, that's one of the key things that uh, has to happen, and, and I think that uh, the current athletic administration knew that, and uh, to get the ball rolling and, and to be in a position to change head coaches that had to be going on across the street, uh, that being the building of a baseball stadium. So I, I don't think if they don't break ground on that, um, I don't think uh, Jeff Wagner leaves um, or, or parts ways with the university, however, however you want to word that. Um, I, I think, you know, if that doesn't happen, they can't search for a new head coach. So that was a big piece uh, of the puzzle. They needed that piece. And I was asked yesterday, what was the reason why Wagner was let go and, I'm sure there are several reasons uh, that, honestly, we could talk about and speculate. Mm-hmm. But at the end of the day, you know, you have an athletic director with a brand new baseball facility. One of the first priorities for him was to get that going, got it going, and now you know, looking to change leadership and, and try to bring someone in who can yep. build a program, recruit to that facility, and you have someone who has a, a lot of so-called big-time baseball experience coming yeah. out of the Big Ten, but the Sun Belt just as good and yeah you know, you're going to find it's going to be a challenge and probably it's going to be very helpful to recruit to it as well yeah no absolutely um you know i mean he's had success uh maybe not uh so much in the last few years at ohio state um especially you know finishing 12th in the big 10 his last season um as the coach and um you know he, he kind of spoke with us about you know sometimes uh people need a change of direction and and Marshall's been a program that uh, has been in need of change um, for, for, you know, a, a few years. And, and that's just not speaking to the coaching staff. That That's speaking to the program in general. Um, they needed some momentum to move forward. Um, we saw the trouble that, that the team had last year uh, running into uh, darkness uh, being the reason that games had to be delayed till the next day. Um, you know, they they played a stadium without lights. That's not going to be a problem in the Sun Belt this year because uh, they're moving those games up to Charleston. But, um, you know, th- that that is a signal to me that the program needed a change to move forward. And, um, you know, and, and when you look at what Spears has done in his first year here as athletic director, um, you know, I think you can see he wants his fingerprint on this baseball stadium built. Um, you know, he, uh, you know, found a way to, uh, to get some money. Uh, he found a way to... Uh, hire a baseball coach w- without a, f- a stadium. Um, you know, he he found a way to to put that together, and I think uh, his vision um, is important in all of this. And, and you know, his confidence in, in being able to make it happen um, is important as well. Uh, he's gotten with the right people, and, and he got his guy as the head coach and a coach that's willing to come in with less than a month, month, six weeks, yeah, from today, six weeks to get it together. And to field a comp, yeah, a, a baseball team that's going to be competitive, or at least be able to go and attempt to be competitive. Yeah, yeah. I think you know all along it's been, you know, when it was announced that uh, Wagner and Marshall would part ways, um, even that was you know kind of uh, it was a shocker to many, but 
um, mainly because of the timeline, uh, because you had less than, you know, I mean, you were halfway through the off season at that point. Um, now you're six weeks away from uh, from the uh, season opener, and uh, time to get to work. And, and I think that uh, Beals hit it on the head um, in his introductory press conference, and it's always important to say the right things at those. Um, and I think he did a good job of that today. Um, but uh, the biggest thing is to take ownership of the program. Um, they have a team meeting on Monday, and uh, you know that's when he'll really get to to meet all the players because some of them aren't back from uh, break yet. Um, but uh, he'll get a chance to meet all the players, all the coaching staff um, who are going to stay this year. Uh, I don't know if you've already hit on that or not, but uh, um, you, you'll hear that in the, in the upcoming media media scrum. So, but uh, a, a chance for him to you know over this next week really take ownership of the program. We've got that media scrum coming up. We'll hear it here in the next few minutes. Luke Creasy's with us from HD Media. Uh, Going to hear from him a lot tomorrow if you're following along with the Herald Dispatch. And, of course, you can find him on Twitter as well. As, uh, yesterday was fun on Twitter, following along with uh, you and me, uh, mostly you, for the basketball <laughs> game. Yeah. Yeah, my business was handled yeah. after the game on air. Yeah, see, well, see, and, 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 and my business has been. home for the been... Cincinnati Bengals is Huntington's ESPN 90. 90- my business had to be handled during the game. So, uh, but uh, uh, I'm sure we'll be seeing a lot of each other over the next uh, 24 hours. Yeah, so. we'll see each other here soon. And now you heard the press conference here, but if you want to watch it later, it's going to be on our uh, HD Media Plus streaming oh, app. Oh, um, video. Which I just found out about it. So if if you want to take a listen back to it, and I've got some uh, some fun stuff coming out in tomorrow's paper about it as well. All right, Luke Creasy with us, HD Media. When we continue, we'll hear from the new head coach, of Marshall Baseball, the 29th head coach of Marshall Baseball. We stressed that 29th a lot in uh, the presser earlier today. Uh, Gregory Beals will hear his media scrum when we continue on this edition of The Drive. This is The Drive with Paul Swan on ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. Welcome back to today's edition of The Drive on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. I'm your host, Paul Swan. Thanks for being a part of today's program. It's a a little quiet now here from where I'm at. Uh, It's dark on the field. I'm in the radio booth at Jones C. Edwards Stadium. It's dark on the field, but the lights are on. The digital boards are on. It's an interesting view from inside the radio booth with just – the scoreboard lights on. It's uh, it's it's actually pretty 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 cool. To be honest with you, to give you an idea where I'm at uh, here today because the introductory presser for Marshall's new baseball coach, as baseball is about to start six weeks, and Gregory Beals has named the head coach. You heard his inter- you heard his presser earlier. Um, had a chance to after he was um, pulled aside for a few minutes to uh, to meet with some people. We got a chance to uh, catch up with him and talk to him. So let's get his comments from the media scrum. Of course, um, you know, Paul Swan, reporter for um, WRVC, with uh, some hard-hitting questions here. Let's hear his media scrum. So first year on the job, win the Sun Belt, right? <laughs> we're going we're gonna to be ready for February 17th, and we're going to try to win that game. And I do believe, I do, you know, I have had a chance to to get on some video and to get in some old scouting reports, and, and I've gotten information from the current coaching staff, you know, the guys that, that, that have been here. We, we have the chance to win. Now, are we in a championship mode? I don't know that yet. I got some learning to do. Um, but I also am excited about helping these guys learn because I see a talent level that given elite competitive mindset, there's a chance to, there's a chance to win or share baseball games. Is this the greatest challenge you've ever had? I don't, you know, it's an exciting challenge. Is it the greatest challenge I've had? You know, I think every challenge is different. So I don't want to say it's the greatest, you know, I went, you know, Going from assistant coach to head coach, that's a challenge to take over your team for the first time. And and then to go to Ohio State and take over for Bob Todd, who's a 23-year veteran and a Hall of Famer, and I took over that. That's not an easy job taking over that situation either. I'm trying to find the right word. The, the bones are here. You know, I believe that. Like, the, like you start to see that there's a reason uh, of – to have a vision. There's a reason to be excited. There's a reason to think we can build something special here. And, and uh, I, I see that. And, and I think Christian did a good job of identifying where, where I was at 
And and I think you guys heard like, yeah, I know that that's where we're going to go practice for the year. And and I know we got to go drive to play our games for the year. But I see what's going on across the street there, and I'll, and I got a big picture in mind. And I but I do not want to let the big picture get in the way of putting this team in the best possible situation as well. Greg, how much have you heard from people around town? This can be a great baseball town given the proper things that you need to win, and now you're getting that. Have you heard that from people so far? I, no doubt I have. You know, I've, I'm, I'm friends with the Atkins brothers who are baseball guys here in this community. I've recruited some guys that, that played for me at Ohio State that are, that are from this community. They're all excited um, about baseball in Huntington. And... Man, it's an old cliche, and it's a great movie. I love the movie. As you build it, they'll come. And we're going to have an opportunity to have a brand-new ballpark and to flip the lights on and play here. And I'm thinking in March and April that we can be the show in town. When you look at the last year for you personally, Ohio State, you take the job at Akron, now you find yourself in Huntington. How how have you navigated that? Um, You know, you talked about challenges, but but definitely a a different year for you. Well, one of the – one of the biggest challenges was and concerns was leaving a team mid-year, and that that was hard to, to to do. There's two reasons that I'm good with. One is this opportunity, in my opinion, was so significant uh, that I, I I didn't want to say no to. Um, and I, I'm very grateful that the administration at Akron have put the exist you know my assistants that were there at Akron are going to run that program for the year. So that team is going to be well taken care of for the year. Um, That's one of the biggest challenges. When I got let go at Ohio State, and we did 12 years there and had a great run there. Um, But, you know, in a lot of places, there's there's a time for change, and there was a time for change there. Um, Not that I agree 100%, but there was a time for change. There was a time for change here at at Marshall University, whether everybody agrees or not, that the time for change does exist and you know as a professional you need to be ready to adapt um i learned a lot because i had some time off this summer and so you know i did a lot of reflection and a lot of tightening up on on my cores and the things i believe in 100 percent. and this is a fresher newer greg beals and i'm a better baseball coach today than i was when i was hired at ohio state 12 and a half years ago Does your coaching staff be retained with your hire being so close to the start of the season with the coach's coaching staff yeah the guys are going to stay uh, and the coaching staff is, is going to stay um, for the season because I believe it's what's best for these guys. And it also gives me the opportunity to spend some time, learn about them, and not make a quick decision, yes or no, on, on their futures as coaches as well. Um, but, uh, you know, in the summer, we'll, we'll reconvene and, and circle the wagons on, on that. But I'm certainly, you know, looking forward to working with those guys. I'm going to learn. I got to learn, uh, you know, I saw the depth chart today for the first time, you know, after fall ball, as far as where they got everybody at and, and, and where, you know, what a lineup's going to look like. We had a great two hour meeting talking baseball, and we'll be back at it Monday morning. How'd those guys receive you, Greg, the players today? I think there's, there's excitement. I think there's, um, I think more than anything is the uncertainty period is over. You know, I think from a coach, you know, from a player standpoint and from a, from all of us, one thing as humans, we don't like the idea of what's going on, what's going on, what, what's going to happen tomorrow. Like, you know, we like things to be mapped out. And we like to have an idea of what to expect day in and day out. And that answer is starting to come to the players. Will it be difficult for you this year that you have to play both your former teams and your first season at Marshall, Ohio State and Akron your first year? Will that be difficult for you? They won't. And the reason I say no is because I grew up with an older brother. And I love him to death, but we fought in the backyard. You know, so um, I love those guys. There's guys in both those programs that, that I love. But they know darn well that when we go on game day that we're going to be ready to fight against each other and compete. And so, no, that doesn't bother me at all. Um, and that's part of the brotherhood and um, a lot of respect for both those. But uh, we'll get after it on game day. Yeah, there's no – look, I, I coach the herd. That's my team. I work for Marshall. That's my team. Yeah, I like you guys. I still like you guys. I'm, I'm going to beat you, but I, I like you guys. No, that's the right attitude right there in his last question. Like, yeah, that doesn't bother me. I work for Marshall University. The, uh, the, the signature on the check is 
probably Christian Spears or Brad from Canova. One of the two. No, no. The coaches um, coaches have loyalty to previous programs. You know, you know depending on how it, it ended, you know, you had some good times with previous co- programs, and it helped you move to the next part of your journey. But at the end of the day, this is now the head coach of the Marshall Thundering Herd. This will be the head coach of the Thundering Herd for the foreseeable future. Five-year contract. Is five years uh, enough time to get this program to a point where it is a contender yearly in the Sun Belt? I think that's what we're looking for here. The first year is going to be, I don't want to say it's a freebie, but the first year, it's, all right, we're moving toward the stadium. Because once the stadium is built and you can recruit to it, I think the expectations are going to be even higher. Right now, we just want to get the facility. I'm your host, Paul Swan. Thanks for tuning in to today's edition of The Drive on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. We're going to be back at it tomorrow. We've got Marshall basketball coming up. That is set for a 3.30 tip. We're going to be on the air with our pregame at 2.30, so I'm looking forward to that. And then afterwards, we will be on the air with your phone calls and your comments talking about hopefully a Marshall victory, trying to bounce back from a two-game losing streak in the Sun Belt. And we've got that for you coming up tomorrow here on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. And also on 93.7 The Dog. Thanks back to the studios for everything today from Christian Palmer. I'm Paul Swan. This has been The Drive on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. Flagship home of the Marshall Thundering Herd and The Drive with Paul Swan, ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930.